this lesson which is whatever it's about getting design so again this is in three parts uh, and three short parts so it won't should not take that much time the first part is where do you put the gates which is layout where do you put the sprue where do you put the runners where do you put the gates among these we will find that the gates location is the most critical and primary location then we look at some of the basic rules of layout okay basic rules of shape or relative shape between the gate and sprue and runners and all that which is essentially what is called as gating ratio so we'll introduce that concept also here itself in the next lesson we'll talk about how to use these things to design the sizes of the gating channels and in the last uh, lesson in this part we'll look at how do you find out whether gating design is right or wrong okay so let's start uh, and let's now put down the rules like we put down for feeding what are the good rules of doing a good gating system design rule number 1 is we want to make sure only clean metal enters the cavity otherwise the war is lost in the beginning itself okay first one is that once we ensure that the next most important point is i want to make sure cavity is completely filled if it's partially filled again it's a immediate junk is immediate rejection but let us say i got clean metal and i got completely filled casting next thing i want to achieve is that can i make it as smooth filling as possible because if i don't fill it smooth i have possibility of erosion air aspiration porosity inclusions and so on so i try to make it as smooth as possible that's my next goal here the last goal if i achieve all the four goals the next target no they're all increasing targets the final target is can i fill it as uniformly as possible because remember in our conformance quality criteria we said i want to have uniform properties so property point of view i want to make it as uniform filling as possible and remember these are in a sequence my first thing is to make sure it is clean metal then make sure it is completely filled then as smooth as possible and as uniform as possible okay and we have also seen some parameters listed below each point okay so for clean metal i can put some filters and things like that complete filling i make sure my temperature is sufficient velocity is right resistance is minimized if it's my smooth filling i minimize my turbulence by minimize lowering my velocity minimizing obstructions to that and if i want a uniform filling can i have more entry points and so on these are all the parameters we'll play with in the gating design but let's first ask a fundamental look at the fundamental uh, structure of the gating system it also defines all the elements of gating system so as you see numbers are in sequence of metal flow you pour the metal from the ladle into the pouring basin from pouring basin it enters sprue and then hits the sprue well where it takes a turn and enters the runners and finally from the runners it enters through the gates into either a feeder or into a casting that's a sequence and that is a nomenclature i'm going to use you have different terms you say down sprue instead of sprue they may say in gate instead of a gate but i'm okay with that as long as you stick to one single uh, known terminology we are doing fine and then different types of gatings are there you can have a horizontal gating or vertical gating and here here see a quick comparison between where you should use what typically use horizontal gating for horizontal castings and vertical gating gating for castings which have to be poured in a vertical fashion any example of casting which you want to pour in a vertical fashion why not make that horizontal anyone can give an example of that hmm? cylinders okay manifolds and all that even housing vertically both depends on your type of die but typically things like a cylinder why you don't want to put a at all cylinder why do you want to pour it like that why not horizontally logically one is distortion also horizontal what happens is metal as metal goes to the top you can have top maybe having you can have porosity and inclusion also one whole side of a cast is not uni non uniform at least in a tall casting at least properties will be little uniform okay but then when you have tall casting you may have to have multiple gates so we'll see how the gates are laid out so between the two of course horizontal is most common 80% castings are at least gravity castings are poured in a horizontal fashion once you say horizontal i have two choices of the gates okay even a vertical casting also have a choice of the gate i can put gates on the top or gates on the bottom between a top gate and a bottom gate i have some pros and cons a top remember gate always let lets in hot metal for me but also gates brings in a high velocity metal for me so hot metal is good from feeding point of view if the hot metal is at the top so feeding from the top is always good but velocity wise 
I do not want a velocity creating a lot of disturbance. So, if I have a velocity at the bottom, it is little more smooth flow. Okay, so, between top and uh, bottom gating, I have pro and con. So, top gating is good from feeding point of view, bottom gate is good from smooth metal filling point of view. Now, I cannot have both. So, all you can do is a compromise or a optimize. I use a middle gate, which is kind of half of good feeding and half of good filling. So, again most popular common gating system is around the parting line in the middle of the casting, okay. because you are minimizing the free fall and turbulence and, and erosion and also hot metal is there somewhere at least on the side and usually you can put a side feeder so that also takes care of that. Now, once you say horizontal gating and gating at the parting line, where on the parting line you will put the gates. If it is uniform casting, you can put the gates, you can put multiple gates. Now, within multiple gates, you can put the sprue at one end or in the middle. If you put the sprue in the middle, it is more uniform distribution. The sprue at one end, you know that metal will flow from the farthest gate first. Okay? And we look at some of these things in simulation also. If you have a circular kind of a casting, try and put gates all around the casting. Again, more uniform filling of the casting. If it is a vertical uh, gating system, you can have a choice of gates being horizontal and having one sprue or sprue coming down and turning back and then gates from the sprue. In the first case, you cannot guarantee which gate will fill first. Even a slight inclination of the gates, any gate can start filling up first. But in the second case, only the bottom most gate will fill first which is nice. And once the casting is filled halfway through, second gate opens up and only at the end, the last gate opens up and it also takes care of feeding to some extent. And if investment casting people do reverse sprue like this. But these are some examples of controlled filling from each into each cavity. Now, how do you decide the number of gates? Okay. If you see in this example, the ultimate reasoning here is that I must be able to reach all points in a casting. So, of course, if you have a casting like this, the metal stream may go from anywhere. Okay. It may go straight, it may go from the sides, whatever. End of the day, I must look at what is my shortest flow distance to the farthest point in the casting. Let me repeat, what is the shortest flow distance to the farthest point in the casting? If that distance is within my fluidity length, I mean looked at fluidity in the science part of the course. Fluidity is about 1 meter for ferrous castings, about half meter for non-ferrous castings. So, if my shortest distance to the longest path, farthest point in the casting is less than let us say 0.5 meters for aluminum casting or less than 1 meter for a iron casting, I am doing fine. Otherwise, I may need to add more gates okay. or more sprues. If it is a very big casting, I may have to even add more sprues, more filling points, more pouring points. Okay. But even from a uniform filling point of view, it makes sense to add more gates because filling can be more uniform except that every gate has to be fettled and there is a fettling mark and a grinding mark. So, I have to also worry about my uh, fettling cost and my yield. Now, where do you put the gate on a non-uniform or a unsymmetrical casting? A casting has all kinds of wall thicknesses. So, if you have a side feeder first of all, there is no discussion of any sort. You put the gate in side feeder because it is, it has immediately two advantages. The feeder is more hot and feeder fettling takes care of gate fettling also. So, there is not much uh, discussion on that. We just put the gate in the feeder if it is possible. Suppose side feeder is not there what do you do? Next best is you look for a thick section on the casting. We will look at little later why thick section, why not thin section. I will give an example for that later on. But first take the thumb rules. If a thick section is there, try and put a gate in thick section. Now, suppose in your two areas, two locations where the metal fall can be less or more. So, wherever you have a free fall of metal is less, it is better because my impact velocity, momentum and erosion will be less. Again, a lower play portion, lower metal fall area is a better area. But supposing I have a core in front of the gate, what about that? Okay. Usually people say you should not put a gate in front of a core because core is already hot, already in trouble. You don't want to create more trouble by making it even more hot. But if your core is very strong okay, and if your core, can, core is fairly large diameter, heat transfer is not a problem. Maybe you are putting that a chill through the core then it is not a barrier to put a gate also because metal can spread nicely around the core. So, depends on what kind of core, 
if you don't know anything, if you don't remember anything else, I would say by default, don't put the gate in front of the code. But you can break the rule if you are, if you know how to break it properly. Now, runner layout is not a important, not a very difficult thing. You just, you can put runner essentially carries metal from sprue to the gates. And all you need to remember is that the, the last gate will fill first, okay. And you, you basically, you can put some additional things like slack traps, or runner extensions and things like that, which we'll look at a little later again on the runner design portion in the next lesson. So I'll just skip this part. And one point I want to discuss here more carefully is relative position of the runner and the gates. Okay. The question here is, should I put runner in the cope and gates in the drag? What are the advantages of that? Runner in the cope above and gates in the drag portion. Slag floats to the top and we think that the clean heavy metal will settle down and go through the gates. So you are getting clean metal in the cavity. Does it really happen? I want you to just imagine the same picture and imagine you are pouring in the pouring cup not just clean metal but also metal with lot of slag and maybe even some sand as it washes the sprue. So like imagine a river flow or water flow. We are pouring dirt along with the metal and metal is falling down the sprue and always like water, metal finds the lowest path to go. What is the lowest path to go? I am talking about initial stream of metal. Lowest path, runner never gets full in the beginning. Runner is partially filled, he already finds a lower path which is gate, it enters through the gate. So you are actually letting dirty metal into the mold cavity by this arrangement. Is everyone convinced what I am saying? Okay. So the alternative, so it's the slag floats to top is only a myth. Before it has chance to float to top, it actually has, it takes its own path through the gates and enters the mold cavity. So what we should really do is a reverse of that, put the runner in drag and gates in the cope, sounds very dangerous because slag is floating to the top, but you have to control it in a nice way. The first advantage of this is first of all that the runner has a chance to fill completely before the metal enters the gates. Remember that point. Metal will not enter the gates until the runners fill completely to start with. But even before that, what happens is the initial metal which is coming with the dirt, slag and the sand particles washed out. And because of inertia, it goes first to the farthest point of the runner. And remember runner is still filling up. So it will go to the farthest end of the runner. And if you keep a razor edge which is called as a runner extension. This extension runner is only purpose is to trap the initial slag and the slant sand particles. And because it is a sharp edge, it freezes instantaneously. So slag and sand particles get frozen into that razor edge sharp edge. And then only the flow starts from the gates. But of course there will be still some residual slag and residual sand particles. So you have to always add filters in this system either between sprue and runners or maybe runners and the gates. If you do that, then you are really taking care of absolute clean metal entering the mold cavity. And a control flow, more important a control flow because flow does not start until the runners are full. Okay. Now what about the sprue shape? Most of the time we see the shape as the first one where taper is, the sprue bottom diameter is more, sprue top, top, uh, top diameter is less because it helps me to mold it easily. I do not have any undercuts. My natural taper or natural draft is there. But you know that this is going to lead to immediately flow separation. Because metal flow, the red line is how it is going to happen. As the metal speeds up, as it falls down, it requires less area to occupy. And the sprue area is more, it is going to separate from the sprue walls. And what you will get is not just metal flow, but also metal with mixed nicely with the air sucked from the side of the sprue. So you get a bubbly metal flow into the casting. So if you want to produce a nice bubbly casting, it is great. If you want to produce a dense casting, it is not so great idea. So you ideally you should taper it as per the, if we see in, in a screw design how to actually design the bottom and top diameter to make sure it does not happen. Then the pouring basin also is a nice thing to design. For small casting it does not matter much, but as your castings become larger and cost of bad quality becomes more. Okay, or you have large number of castings and quality is very important, you have to worry about how do you design the pouring basin. Instead of pouring directly into the sprue and falling into the casting, can I pour it slightly to the offset into a side area 
I also put a small dam between the where the metal falls and the screw and make the dam slightly curved so metal actually flows smoothly over the dam into the into the cavity does a great wonders to reduce vortex reduce turbulence and improve the smooth flow we talked about second was can i make it as smooth as possible this helps in doing that okay to summarize what you learned now is that your gating elements your sprue and pouring basin and well runners and the gates they all constitute the plumbing system of a casting and a good design of this is important to achieve my complete filling smooth filling and uniform filling okay and we also looked at different types of gating systems different uh, um, types of location gating elements and their shapes and sizes shapes not sizes but also the one point he mentioned was that the critical decision in the entire gating system layout is where are you going to put the gates number of gates and the location of gates because everything else kind of depends on that the sprue location depends on collectively where all the gates are there you try to minimize put somewhere in the central area and once you put sprue and the gates runner is nothing but connection between sprue to the gates and a bit of runner extension to make sure your initial slag is taken care of okay 